рад видеть вас. Очень рад. Это, это Рощи Дэн, Советский Союз, Соединенных Штатов. In the first crew transfer, astronaut Stafford and Slayton are hosted in Soyuz by cosmonauts Leonov and Tabasov. Vance Brand remains behind to monitor Apollo system. In the name of the Soviet people and from myself personally, I am To mark the occasion, leaders of both the USSR the and the United the States relay their congratulations. The Soviet spacecraft. New possibilities are opening up for fruitful development of scientific cooperation between countries and the peoples in the interest of, of peace and progress of all humanity. I wish you successful completion of the planned program and a safe return to Earth. Leonid Brezhnev. The astronauts are on the line, sir. Gentlemen, let me call to express my very great admiration for your hard work, your total dedication in preparing for this first joint flight. It's taken us many years to open this door to useful cooperation in space between our two countries. And I'm confident that the day is not far off when space missions made possible by this first joint effort will be more or less commonplace. And may I say, in signing off, here's to a soft landing. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. President. Among ceremonies scheduled for this first day of joint flight are the exchanges of national flags by the spacecraft commander. Later, they sign certificates of docking for the Paris-based Fédération Aéronautique Internationale the organization that validates all aviation and space flight records. Finally, they sit down to dinner in space, Russian style. Right now, I've just finished some strawberries reconstituted. I'm just eating some, too. We're getting ready to eat some borscht, as you can see here. Following breakfast in their separate spacecraft, the crews begin the second day's slate of activities, which includes working on the joint experiments. An electric furnace is aboard for high temperature testing of metal alloys and crystal material samples. One of these samples is a joint experiment. Investigators believe that uniform mixtures of metals and perfect lattice structures can be consistently achieved in materials in the non-gravity of space. In the day's first transfer, Vance Brand visits Kalieri Kubasov in Soyuz, and Colonel Leonov is hosted by astronauts Stafford and Slayton in Apollo. Hello, American people. This, uh, the first Soviet American TV center. Activities begin with a tour of both spacecrafts. Kubasov shows Soyuz to the American audience. Tom Stafford explains Apollo to Soviet viewers. It's been a most rewarding two days here in space, working with the Apollo Soyuz project. Soon after the third transfer, the spacemen field questions from the Soviet and American press. Union and the rest of the world has seen the results of the determination, the cooperation, and the efforts by the governments of the two countries by the managers, engineers, and all the workers involved. It's been a very rewarding experience. Roger, it's Moscow's uh, turn to ask uh, the questions that have been proposed by the press there. Thank you, Bo. Alexey Leonov. How do you think you're comfortable with the Apollo spacecraft? How comfortable do you consider the Apollo spacecraft to be, and how do you like uh, American food? Uh, yeah, she would, yeah. Шесть часов пробыл на космическом корабле Аполло, это в космосе. Но, as all philosophers say, the best part of a good dinner is not what you eat, but with whom you eat. 
North of New England, as the workday ends, Tom Stafford presents Alexei Leonov's spruce tree seed to be planted in Russian soil, a gift from the American people to the people of the Soviet Union to provide a living memorial to the flight. The spacecraft commanders also join the two halves of an Apollo-Soyuz medal. One half launched with Soyuz and the other half with Apollo to symbolize the link up in orbit. When time comes to retire to their own craft, it's Dasvidanya and goodbye. The joint experiments would resume the following day, but only by voice. The next face-to-face -face meeting would be in Moscow in September. This is Apollo Control. At acquisition here, we should have confirmation of undocking and a uh, real-time television picture of uh, Soyuz from Apollo as it backs away. Preparation for the solar eclipse experiment. Solar eclipse occurs briefly and infrequently on Earth, giving scientists too short a time for adequate study. But with two manned spacecraft and proper maneuvering, a solar eclipse can be simulated. Thus, with Apollo blotting out the solar disk, the Soyuz crew train their cameras on the solar corona, recording pictures for later study. They dock again, providing yet another test of the compatible docking mechanism. Apollo Houston, uh, it was a beautiful docking. We had a good picture. We can see Italy coming up in the Mediterranean right now. Apollo Houston through Atch, and we're hearing your call. Carol Roger, we've docked. Carol Lake was on time, though. After some three hours, the two spacecraft separate for the last time, and Apollo maneuvers into position for the final joint experiment, ultraviolet absorption, the measurement of oxygen and nitrogen particles in the upper atmosphere. Apollo directs light beams of special wavelength to a reflector mounted on Soyuz. The beams bounce back to Apollo and are there analyzed by a spectrometer. It is the first such measurement by this method. The results have given investigators a clearer knowledge of outer atmospheric makeup, including the quantities of ozone in the upper atmosphere. The termination of the experiment signals the end of the joint phase of the mission, and the separation between spacecraft grows more distant with each successive orbit. Apollo will fly solo for four more days, but the crew of Soyuz makes ready for return to Earth. Good morning again. Jim Hartz and Alan Shepard from the Mission Control Center in Houston, Texas, live this morning. The Soviet spacecraft is about to land in the Soviet Union. Soyuz recovery, a focal point of media coverage, is typical of worldwide interest in the mission. Not since the first landing on the moon six years earlier has the Houston News Center seen this much press activity. Beneath its single striped parachute, Soyuz settles to Earth in Soviet Central Asia. Retro rockets cushion the impact. Three memorable years have ended. Alexei Leonov and Valery Kubasov have secured yet another place in the history of spaceflight. Apollo continues in orbit, carrying out the remainder of the 27 experiments in space sciences, life sciences, and applications. Among the less notable passengers aboard are numbers of killifish. Sealed in seawater, they are in key stages of maturity. Scientists want to pursue an earlier investigation in which fish taken into orbit on Skylab had orientation difficulties in zero gravity, while those that were hatched in orbit adapted quite well. On return to Earth, the specimens will be compared to similar stages of Earth-raised fish. Through highly refined instruments, they look out in our galaxy and beyond. A new source of radiation is found, the extreme ultraviolet, which many scientists thought would remain forever invisible. Others felt it didn't exist at all. 
the discovery ranks high in importance and may open a new branch of astronomy for studying the universe. They attempt to locate the sources of soft x-rays. They probe the temperature and abundance of the interstellar medium. They test ways of long-term monitoring of aerosol particles in the atmosphere, which may have profound effects on our weather and environment. They look back on Earth on those features that will yield the greatest results, geological features, the ocean, the desert, pollution patterns, weather formation, all the phenomena that comes under the general heading of Earth resources. As the mission comes down to the wire, the docking module is jettisoned, and it too becomes part of an experiment. With the two instrumented spacecraft close together in the same orbit, it is possible to measure their relative movements caused by variations in Earth's gravity. The technique provides a means of accurately mapping the Earth's mass structure on a global basis. Plano? Go. Gato. Go. Metro. Go fly. DNC. Go fly. Apollo Eco. Control, 99 Eco. hours, 29 Eco. minutes, phase Go. elapsed time. Go. Flight Director Go. Frank Eco. Littleton. Go. Pulsing Go. his flight Go. controllers. ECOM Eco. reports everything looks fine. Go for the burn. Okay, Crip, everything's up. Great ship up here. The only thing we're concerned about is that you've got all your splash down parties coordinated over. Well, I've uh, been working on that. <laughs> okay, sounds good. <laughs> In Pacific waters west of Hawaii, Apollo reaches the end of its journey and the end of an era. During re-entry, gas from the attitude thrusters had entered the command module, creating a hazard. Quick action by the crew in recognizing and correcting the problem avoided a potentially tragic incident. They were later hospitalized in Hawaii for observation and treatment. The symptom cleared in a few days, and the crew was released. The spirit and the letter of the 1972 joint agreement had been dramatically fulfilled. Hopefully it represents a prelude to the future, to a time when all mankind will share the work and the dividends of space. The space shuttle is a major step in that direction. The shuttle will transport into orbit a European development called Space Lab. With 10 countries of Europe sharing construction and cost, Men and women of many nationalities will be able to apply their creative talents aboard Space Lab for the benefit of the world community. But for Space Lab, for Shuttle, for all the cooperative space efforts to come, the groundwork has been laid by Apollo Soyuz, the model for the future.